It is about 7.30 a.m., but this theater at Mulago Hospital is already bustling with activity. Medics pass up and down the hallway trying to save a life. Amid all the movements, a tiny toddler lies on a miniature bed awaiting an open heart surgery, oblivious of what's going on. This toddler is Jonita Namugera. She's just one year and ten months old. All visitors to this neat room are required to maintain high standards of cleanliness to avoid carrying germs and transmitting them to the patient awaiting surgery. About five medics surround the operating bed on which Joanita lies. They're like busy worker bees. The doctors say Joanita's case is quite complicated. We are going to first give it a try to see whether the patient will respond well to our surgery. If he doesn't, then we shall do the alternative surgery where we shall put a band and reduce the flow of blood to the lungs giving time for this child to grow and then eventually undergo the main operation. Moments before the surgery, the patient is injected with an anesthetic drug to induce sleep and make her insensitive to pain. The drug slowly takes effect, sending her to sleep. It's very essential that the patient is wired up like we are doing, so that at any one time you are in full control of what is happening to the patient. The theater is fitted with an X-ray viewer and a TV screen, which surgeons will use to follow each step of the operation. We are reviewing the pictures on the echo machine, live pictures, as the heart is beating under anesthesia, to reassess the defect in the patient before we can fully start the operation. While the surgeons get absorbed in this elaborate procedure, a team of two nurses are on standby to ensure that the surgeons have all the equipment they need for the surgery. Two other medics are also busy fixing the heart-lung machine that will later substitute the patient's heart and lungs during the operation. The surgeons then put on their surgical gowns, operating loops and headlights to begin the procedure. The patient's entire body is then covered with sheets, save for the part that will be dissected. The part that is left bare is covered with a sticky transparent polythene paper to avoid the sheets from falling off. The main surgeon and his assistants then take their positions on the patient's bedside. The surgeons use a steno retractor to hold the dissected part of the chest apart so as to get access to the heart. A piece of the thymus gland found around the chest is then removed to avoid obstruction. The heart is now visible and is displayed on the screen. The cover of the heart is then cut open and another drug that prevents blood clotting is administered. Tubes from the heart-lung machine are then connected to the heart's major arteries and veins. The machine is connected to an oxygen source before the operation begins. At this moment, the heart is still beating normally. A cardiac arrest drug is then injected to the patient to stop the heart from beating. After arresting the heart, the surgeons go about searching for the hole. An artificial patch called the decron patch is used to cover the hole and slowly and carefully the stitching begins. The tubes from the heart-lung machine are carefully disconnected from the vessels and arteries and the heart resumes beating normally. A tube is then fixed through the lower part of the cut, leaving a bit of it on the outside. The retractor that was initially put over the cut is removed and the two dissected parts slowly closing together. The stitching of the flesh begins. It is carefully done to avoid rupturing the wound in future. The part of the white tube that remained outside is connected to one underwater seal bottle to suck out fluids, blood and gases that had strayed in the chest.
at exactly 10 minutes past 12 p.m., the doctor put the last stitch in the patient, meaning it's been over four hours in the theater. Now, the surgeons say it can take between four and ten hours to do any open heart operation, depending on the nature of the defect and the experience of the surgeon. An intensive care bed fitted with a monitor and oxygen is brought in to take the unconscious patient to the intensive care unit. And she may be in the ICU depending on her response for about two to three days. Gertrude to Musime with Kwade, NTV, Molago Hospital.